one of this monumental engineering challenge has been accomplished. There is still a very long way to go. Phase one is only the completion of the foundations. Now to fulfill the Crown Prince's dream. 4,500 houses and apartments, hotels and shopping malls must be built along the waterfront. This sand island must support an entire city. But here lies the next major problem. Sand is not easy to build on. Because the sand has been sprayed into position, it's loose and uncompacted. We get the material for the islands uh, dredged from the seabed, which means that all the fine materials are already cleansed from the sand. You can drive on it within a couple hours after you reclaim it. However, it's not satisfactory to build on. But a strong base is vital to support this city at sea. Before construction can start, engineers must find a way to compact the sand to make it firm. In theory, the idea is simple. All we have to do then is compress the top layer. As you can see, when you press down, very little displacement, except straight down, nothing to the side. That gives us a firm surface to build on. But in reality, the engineers are working with an area spread over five square kilometers. Over time, the sand will compact naturally, but this will take years. And time is something the engineers don't have. Construction of the infrastructure must start immediately. As if the schedule wasn't pressure enough, there is another, more important reason why the foundations of the city must be made extra strong. Dubai sits just on the edge of a major earthquake zone. Bam, Iran, north of the Arabian Gulf. 5.26 a.m., 26th of December, 2003. The town is hit by a quake measuring a massive 6.6 .6 on the Richter scale. In minutes, 60% of the buildings are leveled. 43,000 are dead, 20,000 injured, and 60,000 are homeless. Following this, multiple quakes hit Dubai 480 kilometers across the Arabian Gulf. It's a wake-up call to the Palm Island project. If the epicenter hit Dubai, it could spell disaster. Should an earthquake come through the area, the sand might lose its cohesiveness down deep. The reclamation process, pile sand one grain upon another. If we put the ocean around it, you see the island. However, the lateral forces of an earthquake and make the island disappear. This terrifying phenomenon is called liquefaction. It happens when a quake shakes the Earth's surface, causing sand particles to move. As the sand compacts, it pushes the water between the particles upwards, making the ground liquefy. It means the island would sink back into the sea. This was terrifyingly evident in Kobe, Japan. In 1995, an earthquake measuring 7.2 on the Richter scale rocks the city. In seconds, the buildings are reduced to rubble. But in the harbor, events are very different. The force of the quake liquefies the reclaimed land the port is built on. Harbor buildings and walls literally sink into the sea, causing nearly $7 billion of damage. It's something they can't risk in Dubai. Before any houses can be built, Palm Jumeirah must be made strong enough to prevent it from liquefaction. The team work out they need to compact a layer of sand 12 meters deep, too deep to compact by normal road roller. The only solution is a process called vibrocompaction. January 2004. 15 machines work around the clock to firm up the land. Probes drill over 200,000 holes into the ground across the surface of the island. High pressure water and air 
drives each probe deep into the earth. This shaft then vibrates, shaking the ground around it. The earth is compacted. It's a tried and tested formula. As the sand compacts and sinks, more sand is poured in until the area around the probes is rock solid. It takes the team eight months to stabilize the 17 palm fronds, but it has to be done to ensure the safety of 120,000 people who will live and work here. March 2004, two and a half years into the project, and Palm Jumeirah is ready to become a building site. Now thousands of trucks and cranes, tons of supplies, and 2,000 laborers descend on the island. This is the most complicated part of the project, the installation of the infrastructure, gas pipes, electricity cables, water supply, and buildings. In two years, they must build an entire city at sea. But have the developers set themselves a near impossible target? January 2005. One of the world's biggest man-made structures has reached a critical stage. After two years, the island foundations rise out of the sea. Now engineers turn their attention from sand and rock to concrete, glass and steel. They're building an entire city out at sea in just two years. Nothing like this has ever been attempted before. For project manager Scott Hutchinson, building the apartments is a massive logistical nightmare. I've probably worked on three or four other billion dollar projects before, uh, but this is without a doubt the biggest and the most complex that I've ever seen. And, and I can't imagine other projects being any more complex than this. 850 buses ferry the 40,000 strong Asian workforce on and off the island in two 12-hour shifts. They'll work in grueling temperatures of up to 48 degrees Celsius. As well as thousands of people, millions of tons of concrete and steel are shipped in from around the world and driven onto the palm. 51 different contractors build houses, roads, canals, shopping centers, sewage plants, and each part of the jigsaw must meet the next perfectly. To stay on schedule, all the materials must arrive on site exactly on time, and they will go to any lengths if they don't. If material isn't showing up from overseas, you put somebody on the plane and, and fly the guy out there to get it done. You don't wait, you don't uh, sort of react, you just get out there and try and be proactive, because otherwise a job this size never gets done. Supply is not the only problem. Installation of the utilities and pipelines is a massive headache. Miles and miles of gas and water pipelines need to be laid across many different parts of the construction site. Munir Haidar, head of the technical team, knows that on a job this size, a good plan is vital. It's not that there is no plan, there is a plan, but you have to monitor and adjust this plan on a daily basis because it changes every day. Since the island's launch in 2001, it's changed beyond recognition. Originally, Palm Jumeirah was designed to house and service 60,000 people. But by 2004, developers realized the public loved the idea so much, they doubled the capacity. Everybody's changing their requirements, and you have to learn to react very quickly to that. And in Dubai, things move quickly. The pressure is on. Incredibly, when the Palm was first released to the public, all the houses sold in three days. The most expensive go for $1.2 million. David Beckham and the England football team are amongst the owners. Now, three years on, the residents want to move in. There are over 1,800 villas to build on the palm fronts, enough to stretch the Champs-Élysées in Paris 14 times. The delivery date looms nearer, and many of the houses are still at ground level. The schedule is slipping, but the Crown Prince has promised the world a luxury location by 2006. The deadline must be met. To add to the pressure, the design of the palm trunk gets more elaborate every year. This 1.6 kilometer stretch will carry at least 8,000 villa and apartment complexes, 220 shopping malls and restaurants, and the developers are still threatening more. A new plan is the 36-story palm tower, more space for shops, restaurants, and 450 deluxe apartments. 
but all this extra development comes at a price. The deadline for the trunk has slipped to 2008. Well, I guess one of the best parts about it is that when you get frustrated of all the challenges and the paperwork and the meetings and everything that goes with building a project like this, you come outside, you see the sunset, you see the sea, and uh, you really realize not only is it an amazing project, but it's an amazing setting. But this awesome setting creates hidden problems for the engineers. With phase one complete, the island reclaimed, the palm now faces its biggest enemy, the environment. Nature will permanently try to destroy anything built in its way. The bigger the megastructure, the bigger the problem. From the start of construction, there has been one issue engineers know they will face, the problem of erosion. All beaches are constantly affected by waves, but with a man-made island, the problem is exaggerated. These beaches are not naturally replenished with sand by the sea. If nature won't do it, someone has to. Otherwise, the whole island will be washed away. Only now the island is complete can they see the full extent of the problem. Engineers have studied every meter of the Palm's 56-kilometer coastline, analyzing the effect the waves have on its shape. The results show the sand is gradually being washed away in some places and built up further along the structure. Left unchecked, the beaches will no longer be straight, and Paradise Island will fail. But the engineers are confident that through constant maintenance, they can keep the intricate palm shape. Just when the developers think they've cracked the problem, an even bigger dilemma rears its head. Beach erosion is also affecting the Dubai coastline on a much bigger scale. Dubai is famous for its beautiful beaches. Could the success of the megastructure cause the mainland's downfall? Normally, the currents evenly push the sand along the coastline, keeping the beach straight. By building a massive structure so close to the shoreline, wave movement in the area has altered. The current is changing the shape of the coastline. In some places, sand is deposited, extending the beaches out to sea. In others, the beach is eroded away. And initial research shows some worrying facts. In some places, the shoreline could be eroded by 5 to 10 meters per year. Eventually, it could destroy mainland resorts, property and roads. In time, the coastline will settle down. Nature and the structure will learn to live with each other. But this may take years. In the meantime, the developers have bought a dredger. This will suck up the sand where it is built up along the coast and deposit it in the areas suffering from erosion, returning the coastline to its original shape. Dubai's beaches are safe, for now. The engineers are constantly working out how to tame nature's forces. The erosion problem is under control. But the threat to the project doesn't just come from the surface of the sea. They now face a new dilemma beneath the waves. How has this awesome megastructure impacted on the ecology of the area? August 2005, four years after the Palm Project started, this audacious island stamps its mark on Dubai's coastline. This was the first step, a big step, in putting Dubai on the map. But by pushing into unknown territory, building structures never built before, engineers face new problems all the time. Since the Palm Island's conception, environmentalists have been convinced the building of this megastructure would destroy local marine life, ruining one of its greatest selling points, the azure seas it sits in. For the developers, it's a problem they're constantly watching. Every six weeks, divers check the waters. Fish and corals are monitored and measured. But fears that construction may have destroyed this underwater world appear unfounded so far. In fact, this megastructure seems to be having the opposite effect. 
Not only is the marine life unaffected by drought,